G'day you good motherfuckers, my name's Isaac Butterfield and if you're new here, subscribe, how dare you if you haven't. Let me say this, I love Australia. It's the greatest country on earth. I've been lucky enough to travel around and see a lot of different parts of the world, but it is just so good here. We have everything you could want. The landscapes, the water, the creatures, everyone who lives here, it's, it's a cultural just hot pot, a bolognese of just beautiful, Cultural differences, I fucking love it. Don't get me wrong, the crocodiles trying to eat people's legs is not great, but you know, you live with that shit, right? I just grabbed a frying pan and gave an almighty smack on the nose. Does that make me a nationalist? I hope not, or do I? I just love this country, that's all I'm saying. I don't hate other countries, I just really like it here. There's not that many people, 26 million people in the entire country the same size as America. There's no traffic, it's great. The history in this country is incredible. The amazing discoveries we've made, the beautiful sporting moments we have, the incredible music industry, the movie, ugh, the movie industry is not great, the TV industry, ugh. TV industry is fucking horrible. I'm looking at you, Abby Chatfield. But we've also done horrible things. Horrible things that any logical person looks back on and goes, that's fucking disgraceful. That is horrifying. We had people running the show here that were genocidal maniacs. And that is history. There are so many horrific moments in history that we would rather forget, but it's important we don't. We always look at them remembered them and never let them happen again. The way that white Australia over the past 200 years has treated Aboriginal and Indigenous Australians, First Nations people, is deplorable. You learn about it and it's hard to swallow. It's hard to look at yourself as a white person and go, I can't believe that we did that. Even though in reality, obviously we didn't do it. The English did it. They were pieces of shit. Shout out to the English viewers. How you doing, you bastards? Point being, we are blamed for the atrocities that happen. I don't think we should, because that's fucking ridiculous. The whole, the sins of my grandfather theory, because particularly people like me, I came from Ireland. Ireland and Scotland. We didn't do shit. We were persecuted by the English as well. Fuck you, English I guess my point is, I dream of an Australia where we all get along. We recognise Indigenous history and Indigenous people and Indigenous people recognise white history and all that shit and white people recognise Chinese history and Chinese people recognise Indian history. There are so many different cultures here. Like, it's crazy. We are not a white country. We're a country of so many different people. I love how the New Zealand culture represents both white New Zealand and the Maori culture. And Kiora to all my New Zealand viewers. I'm coming there in September, see you soon. But also, fuck off New Zealand, this isn't about you, this is about Australia. I really do wish of a time where we can all get along. But you know what doesn't help? Shit like this. Tonight, a national disgrace or an act of solidarity. When Greens leader Adam Bant refused to be seen with the Australian flag, he ignited a war. Oh, it's stupid. It was irrational, it was immature. Disrespects Australia. Yeah, he's got it all the wrong way around. His ego's out of control. Pathetic. Immature. Crazy. And Australians deserve so much better than that. Okay, so we have a very divisive topic here, the Australian national flag, and a leader from the Greens party in Australia, a politician refusing to have it behind him, basically suggesting that he hates the Australian flag. That's at least what I got from it. And it's being covered here by The Project, a TV show here that uh, is basically watched by middle-aged women in between jamming themselves with giant dildos after their husbands have left them or they've left their husbands because they went to the pub too much, spent too much money on the pokies, etc, etc. They're going through menopause and they need big old dillies just to get through that. They're a great news program and if you need any evidence as to how great they are, they won a Logie here in Australia, a big TV awards because people apparently still watch TV. No, they fucking don't. Anyway, they won a Logie. Congratulations. How good. How wonderful. The best news show, my asshole, guys. Once again, the Logies, only voted for by menopausal women with vaginas drier than the fucking Sahara Desert. In saying all of that, the project knows their audience. They fucking just play to them on a nightly basis. And if we can take anything away from them winning the Logie, them posting this on Facebook, is my top comment. Hooray, I win. So, here's the story. Adam Bant is the Greens leader here in Australia. You may never have heard of this Weasley looking c 
And there is a reason for that. His party, the Greens, that he is the leader of, has one objective, it appears, and that is to end climate change. They never really have objectives of how they're going to save the planet or how they're going to do it and stop climate change. They basically just whinge, okay? The Greens party is all full of protesters and whingers and bitches and moaners. At least that's what I thought. I did go through their website and had a look at some of their policies, and they do have some good policies, I'll give them that. But most of their policies are just piped dreams. They're just like, oh my god, in a perfect world, this is what's happening. And that's why they never get any votes. That's why they're a laughing stock and everyone in this country thinks the Greens are full of shit. There's some other policies that I thought were quite funny. Uh, building a genuinely multicultural country. What is... Ge- <laughs> fucking right, uh. Building an anti-racist Australia. Okay, it's not enough to be not racist. You have to be anti-racist. They're going to clean up politics. Okay. How? They're gonna close the gender pay gap. It doesn't exist, so you did it. Wow, well done. Here's one of my favorites. They're going to end sexism. (laughs) How? (laughs) Oh, did you know the Greens party room is 60% women? No wonder no one gives a shit. The highest of any federal party and we have led the fight for gender equality by committing to implement all of the findings of the Respect at Work report, axing the tampon tax and electing an equal number of men and women to the party room. We just said you had 60% versus 40%, so you didn't really have equal parties. And the tampon tax, that's gonna end sexism, finally. Why don't you do something about the Dick Cheese Act? When's that happening? They're also going to make hate speech illegal. That sounds nice in theory, but what defines hate speech? Remember, I just was removed from TikTok because I made a joke about New Zealand and that was considered hate speech. Peace, disarmament and demilitarization. Reading through your policies makes it sound like I'm listening to my art teacher in year eight whinge and bitch and moan about the 40 hour famine every fucking assembly every single morning for 20 minutes. We get it, mate. We fucking get it. You want to see a beautiful beautiful world but you don't know how it's gonna happen. We all do, alright? Except we all moved on, got jobs, lived our lives and you're stuck there in this first year uni mentality with, oh my god, the world's awful, somebody save us, well I'm gonna save us, how? Don't know, don't know how I'm gonna save us but I'm gonna do it, I'm joining the Greens, fuck off. My point is, they make all these promises and they say all these things but they never do anything. That's the Greens party in a nutshell and the leader of course, Adam Bant, is a prick. Outrage sparked, all thanks to this scene right here. Not the high five, that was pretty solid quality contact. Shut your stupid fucking mouth, Waleed. My God, you are painful. You suck all the dirty, cheesy cocks in the southern hemisphere, mate. It's what's going on up here and here that's got people's backs up. You both not just stand in front of the Australian flag. Well, I think we've got a lot of work to do in this country. It's time to understand that the history of this country and the symbols that represent the history of this country are very hurtful to the First Nations people. Fuck you to the moon. So, Mr Virtue Signal himself, the leader of the Virtue Signalers, Adam Band has this big press conference and the first thing that he does, rather than changing anything that's actually going to help anyone, is he goes behind him, he finds the Australian flag and he goes, nah, fuck this fuck fucking country and throws it away. Leaves it. And he leaves behind the Torres Strait Islander flag and the Aboriginal flag. And this is the end of the video. Racism was ended by Adam Band. What a hero. Hooray! And he knows what he's done because this is what you know, politicians do all over the world. They stand behind the flag that they're from, it represents it, all that shit. But look how happy and smug he is when a reporter asks him about it. Not just standing in front of the Australian flag. flag. Look at that smug little grin running around like his carbon footprint doesn't stink. Fuck off, Adam, you grub. Adam Band has actually been avoiding the Aussie flag at press conferences since he became leader in 2020. But Labor's decision to introduce our two other flags earlier this year made the absence of the Aussie flag more noticeable. Now, as I said before, believe it or not, many, many moons ago, some white people who didn't like people who didn't look like them went around, particularly here in, well, not particularly here in Australia, all over the world, and they did some horrible shit, like the white Australia policy, like the stolen generation, all these horrible things. They looked at the indigenous people here and they just said these people are animals. That was literally in the constitution, I think, off the top of my head. Anyway, disgraceful. Just just fucked. And we look at that now and we go, 
What? What are you... What? But that's not the world we live in now, obviously. Thank fuck. But people who experience that, all their ancestors, or their grandparents, great-grandparents, they actually went through that. They see the Australian flag as a part of that control, or that genocide, or, the, or, or, the, or the, what took over their land. Now, the part of the flag that Indigenous people and people who went through these atrocities, or great-grandparents or grandparents went through, the part of the flag they don't like, and for obvious reasons, is the Union Jack. This part, it represents Great Britain. And if you really want to argue about it, they make a fine point. Why do we have the British flag on ours. Now, I'm a big fan of the Republic. Why? I don't know, I just, I like the idea of moving away from mum and dad. I just think it's a bit weird that we have the Queen, you know, ruling over us. I think we should be our own independent country. Now, I know nothing would actually change, but it's a nice little thought. If it costs too much money, then whatever. And also, I wouldn't do it while the Queen's still alive because she's an old lady. But once fucking old, what's the old prick's name? Charles walks in and he's king. Fucking let's get out of here. But this is the thing about the flag. It's not what it looks like, it's what it represents. And it represents a beautiful country. A country that was fought for by people of all different colours, all different fucking ethnicities, all different backgrounds, all different religions. Fought for, people died for that flag. And we're sitting here with this beautiful country with all these amazing things that we can see, experience, smell, taste, everything. The freedom that we have was fought for over generations. That is what that flag represents. And when you take it away and you disrespect it, people have the shit, smug boy fucking Adam Band, you c And even though the Anzacs, they never fought underneath that flag. They fought under the Union Jack. That is not the point. It's what they fought for. It's what they represent. I love the Aboriginal flag. I think it's fucking awesome, right? The Australian flag, fucking awesome. Torres Strait Island flag, awesome, right? They are three flags that represent this country. I'm not mad at changing the flag once the Queen fucks off. It's got the Southern Cross there. That's the most important part. That is the most important part because in Australia, when you look up at the night sky, that is what you see. And that is what has been looking down on this great Southern land for eternity. And back to the Anzacs, they fought and they died next to people of all different colours, right? They fought for the people back home. And that is what the flag at this point represents. Whether or not you like it or not, it doesn't matter. It's what it represents in this country. I fucking love this country. It is a beautiful part of the world. And if you're running around going, oh, it's full of racism and all this shit, shut the fuck up. You've got no idea. No fucking idea. Of course it exists, but you've got no fucking idea how good you have it. There is always time for improving upon things, but let's not just throw the baby out with the bathwater and get rid of everything and say everything is colonialism and the flag represents hatred and all this shit, because it doesn't. It represents stories like this. The diggers in France in 1917 who defended in brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat a concrete building known as Anzac House. One of the gents, Lieutenant Arthur Hill, a 32-year-old farmer from near Wagga Wagga in New South Wales, climbed a ladder to the roof of the shelled fortification and waved the Australian flag to his surrounding comrade. Now, that is what that flag represents. Victory in the face of danger. Victory for your country. Fighting for everything that matters to you back home. Your mother, your father, your grandparents, your son, your daughter. All that shit. That's what it means. It doesn't mean colonization. I don't see that flag and go, yes, thank fuck white people. No, no. It's all of us. It's indigenous. It's white people, brown people, Chinese people, Japanese people, people from Afghanistan, whatever. It's all of us. It's our country. And for now, it's our flag and Adam Bant Fuck you to the moon. Antics like this, this virtue signaling saying I love First Nations people more than anyone else, it turns more people off than turns them on. Spot on, I agree, Adam sucks. The original and Torres Strait Islander flags, less so. The opposition opting not to follow the new government's triple flag formation. Which is why they didn't win the last election, because they don't represent all of Australia. So from there, the project gets the fucking queen of progressive politics. My God, this woman, Lydia Thorpe. Oh, you thought the old bant dog was painful. You want to jam your testicles in a fucking vice after this. She really hates the concept of Australia. She's explained many times that she is not Australian, even though she was born here. <laughs> Guess what, Lids? You are Australian. Ha uh ha. -huh. Well, Green Senator Lydia Thorpe joins us. Senator, do you actually remove the Australian flag at your press conferences? Absolutely, I do. Uh, the Australian flag does not represent me or my people. 
it represents the colonization of these lands and it has no permission to be here. Oh, shut up. As much as you don't want it to represent you, it does. All right, you're wrong, I'm right, shut the fuck up. Don't get me wrong, she has points and arguments, like the treaty argument, all right? Like actually respecting indigenous culture, which I think is our culture. Even though I've got white skin, fuck. Like I'm a part of Australia, so are indigenous people, so indigenous people are part of my history as well. Like I just, I don't know, that's how I feel about it. I just think when you divide people and piss people off deliberately, when you try to segregate people and separate people, I think that's a bad way to do it. This is what Lydia had to say about a white guy commenting on the flag removal. Well, you're comparing a middle-aged white privileged guy to a grassroots black senator <laughs> um, who comes from the frontline activist space. Um, I think you could answer that question yourself. You're going to believe a middle-aged white colonised privileged guy who thinks he knows best. Fuck me dead. Lydia, can you just chill out a bit and just try to think about how lucky you are to live in the country of Australia where you can do anything you want, including being a fuckwit. You know what I think? I think the Greens are a lot like the animal group PETA. People for the protection of cows or whatever they are. The Greens and Peter both rely on outrageous things happening so people talk about them and then they slightly get in the news and that's basically free advertising. Now Peter have said some outrageous things in the past. They said milk causes autism. They claimed that uh, pet is a derogatory word. They barbecued fake dogs and humans. They attacked Steve Irwin when he died. And just in the last week, they carried on about not allowing gun owners to adopt pets. But this is exactly what the Greens do. They say outrageous dumb shit just to get free press so people don't forget about them. Say something stupid and then people will remember your name. And that's why we know the names Lydia Thorpe and Adam Band. Otherwise we never would. And I think we shouldn't, because they're dumb people, doing dumb things, and fuck them to the moon. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I'll tell you what, join us on Patreon for $1 a month. Oh, you get some access to some good shit. Go and check it out. Um, be a good motherfucker, peace, middle east, middle east, middle east, bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching the video. Your support means absolutely everything. If you haven't subscribed, do it right now. You keep me dogs fed and I love you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, there's three new videos on this channel every week. And if you want more, you can head over to Little Buttsman, which is the second channel. Ladies and gentlemen, there is more. What about the podcast each and every week? It's available on Spotify and YouTube as well. And I'm also on tour right now around the country doing my show, Cancel Me Now. Stand-up comedy is back, ladies and gentlemen. And please, for Christ's sake, follow me on Instagram. I'm very lonely. Love ya. Bye.